Ok, vamos a empezar. Por favor, este, tomar asientos. Okay, so it is a pleasure uh, for me to introduce Maricela Morales, who is our distinguished guest today. Uh, she is the chief and senior investigator at the Integrative Neuroscience Research Branch, the Neural Network Section at uh, the National Institute on Drug Abuse, NIDA, uh, of, of the NIH uh, from the US. Uh, her research work is about investigating the molecule cells and neuronal pathways central to the neurobiology of addiction. Her research focuses on two issues. What is the brain circuitry through which addictive drugs and their habit forming action, have their habit forming actions? And what are the neuroadaptations in this circuitry that accompany the transition from recreation onto compulsive drug taking? We are very honored to have her close the first international symposium on addiction research. And at the same time, as the opening event for the 30th year anniversary of the Institute of Neurobiology, UNAM, Juriquilla, and inaugurating the research visit program Ricardo Miledi of the Institute. Thank you, Maricela, for coming. Hello? Uh, can you hear me in the back there? Can you hear me in the back? Say yes? Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, thank you uh, very much, Eduardo, for the invitation and in introduction. It is a pleasure to have the opportunity to come back. Uh, each time that I come back, I see that the place is growing, not just in size, but in the research. And it's so uh, very rewarding to see very young people here, uh, which uh, they're going to be our future leaders in the field of whatever they decide, you decide. So, um, also, uh, it's, it is a great honor uh, to be here uh, as one of the uh, events that, they are that you, you are planning to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Instituto de Neurobiología. And the story that I'm going to tell you today actually it started about 30 years ago also. So as Eduardo mentioned, I am an investigator in the National Institute on Drug Abuse. We are about to change the name. And our mission is to advance science using different approaches in order to, have, uh, to understand the causes and consequences of drug use and addiction, and to apply this knowledge to prove individual and public health, and in the process to educate us, the public, and uh, uh, policy makers. Uh, the advances in science have revolutionized our uh, fundamental abuse and knowledge on drug abuse and addiction. We have learned that drug addiction involves uh, multiple factors and they interact among them. So this is not just one direction as you can see uh, and involves uh, the biology, uh, gene, genes that uh, predispose for, the, for drug addiction. Uh, the environment, as you know also, there's an uh, interaction between environment and, bio and biology, and also the type of drug. Because different drugs, they have different effects in the brain and addiction. But also, the way in which the drugs enter the, the body. It is not the same to chew uh, coca leaf than uh, to, uh, to snort cocaine. And also, uh, the different drugs and in different uh, ways in which they enter the brain, they going to alter different uh, mechanisms in the brain. And all of this is going to result in addiction. As it was pointed uh, in the previous uh, round table, not all individuals that consume drugs develop addiction to, to these drugs. I just want to point it out that at NIDA, in our website, we have uh, 
kit tool of uh, slides, and this was taken from our website. So, in general, the initial decision to consume drugs is something that is voluntary, and I say in most of the cases. However, the prolonged use of drugs may alter the structure and the function of the brain in such a way that affects the self-control and the ability to resist the intense impulses to consume the drugs. So, why do people abuse drugs? So, science had taught us that drugs of abuse engage motivation and pleasure pathways of the brain. And one of these pathways is the so-called mesocorticolimbic dopamine system. This system consists of dopaminergic neurons that they are located in the VTA and their projections to different brain structures, including the nucleus accumbens and the medial prefrontal cortex. This pathway, this uh, reward system, it is present in every single animal. And maybe you have heard many times uh, the people saying that this system didn't evolve to consume drugs. Actually, the drugs of abuse utilize this system. And this is a, a system that participates in the motivation of learned behaviors for the survival and reproduction. So this pathway is activated by natural rewards, such as food and water. And what it happens is that the presence of these natural rewards results in the release of dopamine within this uh, pathway, mainly in the nucleus accumbens. The same pathway is activated by drugs of abuse, but depending on the drug and the way by which the, the drug enters our body, the res there's a release of dopamine that can be two to ten times more than the release of dopamine that is released by natural rewards. So you can, and here I'm just putting double, it's not even ten times because it could be the whole screen. So you can imagine that the release of such huge of amount of dopamine uh, immediately going to have an effect in the function of the brain because the brain was not developed to handle these big amounts of release of dopamine. So, in general, the ventral tegmenta area, the VTA, has been uh, associated with different aspects of behavior, running all the way for reward, aversion, pain, uh, inceptive salience, working memory, social behavior, etc. All of this. So, about 10 years ago, I started to pose the hypothesis that all the uh, uh, functions ascribed to the VTA, they may be explained in part by different types of neurons located in the VTA. And here I had to tell you that at that time when I proposed this, it was something that it was not accepted because at that time it was thought uh, that all neurons in the VTA, they were dopaminergic. So in the process of analyzing the different types of neurons in the VTA, we found an anticipated cellular mechanisms of neurotransmission. And today, I'm not going to give you the details on how we reach out to these conclusions because I would like to focus more the talk to drug addiction. So, for almost 60 years, we have known that the VTA has dopaminergic neurons, and these are the neurons that for 60 years have um, a 
taking the attention uh, in neuroscience in the BTA. However, we also know almost for 20 years, 25 years, that the activity of dopamine neurons can be inhibited by local GABAergic neurons. And several years ago, we made the discovery that in the VTA, there are neurons that utilize glutamate as neurotransmitter. This type of neurons, in a specific manner, um, express the vesicular glutamate transporter type 2, which I'm going to be referring as VGLUT2. This protein here, it gets intercalated in the synaptic vesicle and its function is to accumulate, to uptake glutamate and accumulate it in the uh, lumen of the vesicles for its synaptic release. And through the characterization of these different types of neurons in the VTA, we have found that there are neurons that release just dopamine and they are present in, throughout the entire VTA. We found, as I mentioned before, that the VTA has glutamatergic neurons, that they are mainly distributed, uh, well, actually they are infrequent in the lateral parts of the VTA. We discover neurons that co-release glutamate and dopamine. We also found neurons that release just GABA. And here I'm going to uh, pause to point it out that textbook knowledge has taught us that in the brain there are neurons that release glutamate or neurons that release GABA. But what, what we discovered in the VTA neurons that co-release glutamate and GABA. And as I mentioned before, I'm not going to go into the details of all these discoveries. I'm just going to give you a brief summary, starting with the glutamatergic neurons of the VTA. We have found that the glutamatergic neurons in the VTA, they are intermixed with dopaminergic neurons. And we have found different types of glutamatergic neurons that they have different functions, even they come in from uh, in, within the same uh, neighborhood. We have found glutamatergic neurons that make synapses on neighboring dopamine neurons within the VTA, produce the firing of these dopaminergic neurons and this the release of this dopamine on the medial spiny neurons uh, produce reward. We also found that intermixed with these uh, type 1 glutamatergic neurons, there are glutamatergic neurons that send projections to the nucleus accumbens. They activate parvalbumin GABA interneurons and this results in the suppression of the activity of medial spiny neurons and this produce aversion. So this is to tell you that the idea that the VTA it was make use of dopaminergic neurons obviously is wrong and the idea that glutamatergic neurons uh, didn't exist in VTA it was wrong and to show you that the neuron that release the neurons that release the same neurotransmitter, in this case glutamate, depending on the postsynaptic neuron, in this case dopamine, dopaminergic or parvalbumin, they're going to drive different behavior. And actually these behaviors are opposite. Uh, there are reward of aversion. Uh, the discovery of these combinatorial glutamatergic dopaminergic neurons created a lot of expectations in the field because it opened the possibility of having a neuron that released the neuromodulator dopamine and the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate. And then uh, these people start to review in the literature 
uh, which interpretations of the data were uh, basically based on assuming that release, that dopamine is released alone, but not in combination with glutamine. So as a cell biologist, because my training is in cell biology and molecular biology, uh, I wanted to know how is that a neuron uh, can release glutamate and dopamine. What is the mechanism? And this is what we found. Uh, we found that these uh, BGLU2TH neurons, they project to the nucleus accumbens, and they have, in this, this is the axon of these dual uh, BGLU2TH uh, uh, neurons, and they have uh, in a shared axon, they have vesicles for the accumulation of glutamate, and in the same axon, but in different compartment, they have vesicles for the release of dopamine. So, basically, what I show you is that an axon from these neurons have the capability to excite, for instance, as mirror spanning neurons, and modulate the activity of neighboring uh, neurons. As you know, dopaminergic neurons transmit mainly to volume transmission, uh, and only about 30% of uh, they form connections, the classical synaptic connection. So, regarding the combinatorial uh, glutamate GABA neurons, again, just a summary, I can spend three hours, four hours talking about these uh, um, neurons that, of course, they are one of our favors in the lab. And what we found is that these neurons project to the lateral habenula. And this is very interesting because in this case, an axon, a single axon terminal from these dual glutamatergic avergic neurons contains vesicles for the release of uh, GABA and vesicles for the release of glutamate. I just want to point it out that uh, this form of neurotransmission is the major form of neurotransmission in the lateral habenula. This is not an uh, infrequent event. And as you know for your courses, the lateral habenula have been implicated in several brain disorders, including schizophrenia, um, a, a withdrawal of drugs of abuse, and depression. So we, we can start speculating about, like, if something, if there's more release of glutamate, or less release of glutamate, or vice versa with the GABA, or changes in the postsynaptic neurotrans uh, uh, receptors, maybe the breaking of this delicate balance is going to result in a brain disorder. But this is just a speculation. So, in addition of analyzing the cellular composition of the brain, oh, by the way, because uh, we have previous, previously a debate about um, humans and animal models. I have to tell you that I found these neurons also in humans, women and men. So, um, in, so what we start thinking is, in addition of studying the cellular composition of the VTA, we wanted to, to know how these neurons within the VTA communicate among them, uh, but also how do they integrate information, so interaction among themselves and integration of interaction of information for other brain areas. And we have been analyzing the projection from the dosa rafe. And this is uh, where I'm going to tell you, uh, to talk for the rest of, of this uh, presentation about how we went from the discovery of the, this projection from the dosa rafe to the VTA and their implication in um, drug abuse. So 
the, the DOSA RAFE projections of the DOSA RAFE to the VTA have been studied uh, since the late uh, 70s, uh, for, of course, for more than 40 years. And it was found that the, the DOSA RAFE, together with the lateral hypothalamus, are the two brain regions that heavily project to the VTA. And very interesting is that classical studies with electrical stimulation in the dosa rafe uh, resulted in reward. So the animals like to receive uh, the electrical stimulation in the dosa rafe. So this implicate connection from the dosa rafe to the VTA. So for over 40 years, the uh, effects of serotonin on the VTA specifically on dopamine neurons have been studied. And for 40 years now, we have um, uh, received the information or uh, dissemination of the information that uh, serotonin uh, has missed effect on VTA dopaminergic neurons. Meaning that when you put serotonin, that can result in activation or inhibition of the dopaminergic neurons or nothing happened. So, however, alterations in the serotonergic uh, functions and reward-related processing has been implicated in several brain disorders, including uh, schizophrenia, depression, and drug abuse. And for 40 years, it has been shown that depletion of serotonin produces brain, uh, increases brain stimulation reward, meaning that if you remove uh, serotonin, then you need more activation in order to produce uh, reward. And also, it has been shown that inhibition of serotonin in neurons in the dosar and the medial rafe induces place preference. And this has led to many, many experiments that concluded that serotonin uh, was um, aversive. But I have argued that this has been global uh, manipulations of serotonin, and therefore suggesting that serotonin is antagonistic to reward functions. So, I, you, uh, I was very skeptical about this uh, 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 conclusion that I told you for 40 years has been around. And, and my, my concern was, or still is, that these global manipulations of serotonin, depletion of serotonin from the whole brain, can have dramatic implications that we cannot interpret. I mean, it's a miracle that the animal is still breathing, no? So, what I thought is to study specific pathways from the dosa rafe to manipulate specific pathways. In this case, in this case the pathway from the dosa rafe to the VTA. But before that, I want to remind you that the, even the dosa rafe is recognized by being a center of the production of serotonin. The dosa rafe also contains neurons that release dopamine, peptides, GABA, and also glutamate. These glutamatergic neurons in the dosa rafe express the vesicular glutamate transporter type 3, different than the dopaminergic neurons. And there are different types of glutamatergic neurons in the dosa rafe. There are neurons that release just glutamate, and we refer to them to uh, big glut 3 only neurons. And there are neurons that, in addition to big glut 3, they have serotonergic markers, such as tryptophan hydroxylase for the production of serotonin or serotonin uh, transporter. And in the talk, I'm going to be referring to these uh, biglut 3 only neurons and biglut 3 serotonergic neurons. 
expressed in either TPH or CERT. So when we found these different types of neurons in the dosa rafe, we wanted to know the extent to which our classical serotonergic neurons or this dual glutamatergic serotonergic or these uh, glutamatergic only neurons innervate the VTA. And for that, uh, Hewling Wand injected fluorogold into the VTA and then analyzed cell bodies that contain uh, fluorogold in the dorsal rafe. And this is just to show you the site of injection of fluorogold in the VTA. And here in the same animals, we look for fluorogold neurons in the VTA and then phenotype these fluorogold neurons by the detection of either BGLU3 mRNA or a, a tryptophan hydroxylase. So she quantified almost 3,000 neurons of fluorogold uh, in the dosa rafe and a higher magnification. I'm showing you here a fluorogold neuron that contains BGLU3 but lacks TPH. So this is an example of a big glut 3 only neuron, a neuron that just released a glutamate. In the same uh, dorsal rafe, she found neurons that contain fluorogol, they contain big glut 3 and contain TPH. And we, these are the big glut 3 TPH neurons. And she also found our typical serotonergic only neuron. This is the fluorogol uh, neuron, dorsal rafe, doesn't have big glut 3, but it contains TPH. So basically what I'm showing you here is that the big glut 3 neurons from the rafe project to the VTA. The dual big glut 3 TPH also project to the VTA. And of course, the serotonergic only neurons project to the VTA. So then we wanted to know the frequency of this projection, and this became a, a, a shocker, because what we found is that about 46% of all projections from the RAFE to the VTA is coming from glutamate, neurons that release just glutamate. A good proportion, 40%, co-release glutamate with serotonin, and just as little as 13% of the projection from the RAFE to the VTA release just serotonin. And the reason why I decided to show you this data is uh, just um, to illustrate that a lot of, of the knowledge that we have in the textbooks it is not uh, something that is written in stone that uh, we have really to question uh, within the frame of the, within a historical frame, because these books were written when we didn't have the tools that we have now available. So I encourage you to read the published literature to keep up with the new discoveries. So uh, for me, this was very exciting and eye-opening to, consider that when we think about projection from the RAFE to the VTA, we immediately think about serotonergic projection, but this is not the case. So then we wanted to know, okay, so all of these three types of neurons project to the VTA, but do they make connections with uh, dopaminergic neurons? So for that, um, we use a combination of transgenic animals, viral vector tracers, and immunoelectron microscopy. Um, there are different ways by which we can infer a synapse, but the only way until these days that we can visualize a synapse is by electron microscopy. So we use a uh, circuit mice, that means that uh, the, all uh, neurons that have serotonin transporter, 
they have the Cree recombinants that is going to allow us to express specific uh, molecules that we deliver into the dosa rafe via uh, viral vectors. So in the dosa rafe, we injected a viral vector that uh, express M cherry, a fluorescent red protein, and this M cherry is going to be expressed. Well, the, the, vi the, the virus is going to transfect all neurons, but the M, the M cherry is going to be expressed only in the neurons that have CERT here, serotonin transporter. And we wait for six weeks until the M cherry travels all the way in the axon and reach the VTA. And then we collected the VTA and look for the detection of N cherry in relation to TH with tyrosine hydroxylase with this a marker of dopaminergic neurons. And we look at this VTA uh, under the electron microscope, which is here. And what we observe is this type of structures. And this is the cartoon of what we are seeing here. This is an axon terminal coming from the dosa rafe that contains CERT, only CERT expression. And this axon terminal is making a synapse. I think I abused this guy. Do you have another a pointer? Doesn't have a battery, I think. Oh, there's another here, maybe. So the arrow indicates the synapse. Oh, thank you. So we can charge this. Is there a battery? Yeah. Um, so there's, um, this is a synapse between the cell axon terminal uh, dopaminergic dendrite. So this is just the rectangle is to emphasize the, the synapse. So in the same preparation, we also identified axon terminals that contain both CERT and BIGLU3, and they are making synapses on uh, TH neurons. So this means that the VT8 dopaminergic neurons are capable to form synapses with both serotonergic only and serotonergic glutamatergic co-releasing neurons from the dosa rafe. So now that we have this, so the next question is, what is the role of these uh, synapses of this pathway from the dosa rafe to the VTA? What is the function in behavior? So for that, um, what we decided to do, well, sorry, before that, we wanted to know, first of all, if these dopaminergic neurons, that they are regulated by the dosa rafe, if they project to the nucleus accumbens. Because as I mentioned at the beginning, we have this reward pathway from uh, the VTA dopaminergic neurons to the nucleus accumbens. So we wanted to know if this uh, upstream dorsal rafe participates in this reward system. And for that, uh, we use uh, the same approach that I mentioned before. Uh, in the dorsal rafe, we inject a viral vector. In this case, to express uh, yellow fluorescent protein uh, tethered to channel rhodopsin. And then uh, in the nucleus accumbens of the same animal, we injected CTV to label in red here the neurons that project dopam neurons that project to the nucleus accumbens. And then we collected this BTA and did electrophysiological studies. And this is um, in the presence of optical stimulation to release the neurotransmitters from these uh, uh, fibers from the dosa rafe. And this is what we found. This is an example of, uh, in the VTA of a neuron that contains CTV 
After the recording, this neuron was filled with biocytin and then uh, labeled with an antibody against TH. And this is uh, the MERS picture. So meaning that this is a dopaminergic neuron that projects to the nucleus accumbens and show by, electrophys by electrophysiology that this neuron is uh, receiving glutamatergic inputs from these CERT neurons. So basically, this serotonergic neuron is releasing uh, glutamate into this dopaminergic neuron. So this is what I show you, show you that the dolsa rafe has serotonergic big loop 3 axon terminals. Why I say that they are, they are double? Because we use a circuit animal to drive the expression of uh, channel uh, rhodopsin in these neurons, these terminals. And we know that release glutamate because as I show you, it induces the firing of dopaminergic neurons and happen to these dopaminergic neurons project to the nucleus accumbens. So that's okay if you haven't understand anything. Sometimes I even have uh, difficult explaining, but everything is going to come together as you're going to see. So now uh, we wanted to know if, now we know that there's these dorsal rafe neurons that uh, project to the VTA, activates dopaminergic neurons that project to the nucleus accumbens. So now the question is, is this pathway in some way aversive or rewarding? Because remember, history in the books have told us that serotonin is uh, aversive. So we use the same uh, paradigm that I described before in the dosa rafe of Cercri animals. We inject the viral vectors, but in the top of the VTA, we put an optical fiber with a laser for the stimulation of the, the release uh, the release of neurotransmitters from these terminals. And these animals, these are uh, mice, these animals were tested in a, these, these uh, three chamber apparatus, and it consists of two uh, identical chambers, but one of them is paired to a laser, such that each time that the animal goes from here, enters the laser, Boop, the laser is turned on. And each time that the animal leaves, the laser is off. So as you can, this is the control. You can see the, for the tracers that the animals spend equal time in all the, um, the, the chambers. But the channel rhodopsin animals, the ones that had the capability to release neurotransmitter from the uh, fibers of the dorsal rafe, these animals prefer the laser per chamber. And this is the so-called online uh, behavior. So meaning that um, these animals uh, like the area in the chamber where, where they receive the laser stimulation. So then we wanted to know if this is something that can be maintained uh, more uh, uh, that it uh, lasts beyond the stimulation with the laser. So we repeat the experiment. Oh, sorry, before that. Um, what we wanted to know is the extent to which this release was due just, this behavior was due just to the release of serotonin or uh, glutamate or glutamate of serotonin. And for that, we use a pharmacological approach in which 10, uh, 10 minutes before the uh, testing the animals in this chamber, we put an, an antagonist. Sorry, I, I changed my slides, sorry. So, Going back to what I was saying before, <laughs> I, I realized that I had the wrong slide. So we tested the animals as before, and this is the day one. 
just these uh, rectangles, meaning that this is the time when the animals are receiving a stimulation. This is our uh, control animal, and as you can see, the animal doesn't have any preference from the laser pair chamber, and this is the channel rhodopsin. So, as I showed you before, in, we tested the animals in the presence of the laser, that is our day one, and here is showing uh, the animal shows a preference for the laser chamber. We repeat the same test the second day, and as you can see, we repeat in the presence of the laser, the animal uh, still uh, prefers the area associated with the laser. But the important uh, observation is what happened in the third day, in the test day. In the absence of the laser, the animal it still prefers the area that was previously associated with the laser stimulation. Uh, so meaning that the release of serotonin, and maybe together with glutamate, we don't know, uh, induces not just the online preference that I showed you before, but also a condition place preference. It creates a memory of the reward. So now is the, the slide I want to show before. So when I say that there is release of neurotransmitter from this dose of to the VTA, uh, it can be just serotonin or it can be glutamate, the, the, the uh, neurotransmitter that is driving the behavior. So what we did next is again to have animals uh, cert animals in which in the dose of Rafe we injected the viral vector, we have the optical fiber over the VTA, but in addition we put a micro a probe uh, to inject receptor antagonists. I just want to uh, bring to your attention that we are doing all this in, in a little uh, mouse. So what we found is these are animals that received saline before we put it in the chamber to test it, the response with the laser. And as before, when we injected saline in the VTA, the animals in the presence of the laser, they prefer the area associated with the laser. But again, in the next day, in the absence of the laser, they still show place preference. Also, it was not as robust as before because they were training only for, for one day. But what happened when we injected a receptor, um, a serotonin receptor antagonist? In this case, we used ondansetron because previously we had discovered that serotonin type 3 receptor is present in dopaminergic neurons. So when we injected in the VT8 on Dancetron, then this uh, preference for the, uh, the part of the compartment in which the animals show preference, it was abolished in the presence of, of, of the laser and of course also in the absence. Similarly, when the animals were injected, with um, a receptor, a glutamate receptor antagonist, we lost the preference. As you can see here, we went from this preference in blue to just no preference. So with this, we concluded that both the release of serotonin and glutamate from, this, uh, from the dose Rafe played a role in the development of place preference. So then we wanted to know if this pathway also promotes the release of dopamine in the nucleus accumbens. Because as I showed you before, we know that this pathway activates dopaminergic neurons that project to the nucleus accumbens, as shown you by the electrophysiology data. So in this case, the same preparations, injections of the viral vector, those are Rafe, a laser a probe over the VTA, but now we put a microdialysis probe in the nucleus accumbens to collect and measure release of dopamine. 
and this is the control uh, even in the presence of the laser because we don't have channel rhodopsin the levels of dopamine in the nucleus accumbens remains constant however in the channel rhodopsin uh, animals uh, there's a huge increase of the release of dopamine in the nucleus accumbens so this is if you haven't um, understand anything of what I have said, so this is the summary. So what I have shown you is that the dose are rafe, has neurons that express uh, serotonergic markers together with big blue tree. These neurons make synapses on dopaminergic neurons and release glutamate and serotonin and these uh, dopaminergic neurons that receive projection from the dosa rafe project to the nucleus accumbens and results in the release of dopamine in the nucleus accumbens and this is rewarding. We repeat exactly the same experiments but in this case uh, we use big blue tree cree mice and we found the, the same thing with some differences. Again, these uh, big blue three neurons, glutamatergic, uh, synapse on dopaminergic neurons in the VTA, results in the release of dopamine and is rewarding. However, they evoke a higher release of dopamine in the VTA. And this is going to become important uh, in the second part of the talk. The, basically, the activation of these neurons, although release dopamine, they don't release as much dopamine as when we activate this pathway from glutamatergic neurons. So with this, uh, I just want to tell you as an experience that it took us 10 years to publish this paper. And out of frustration, I start working on this paper. <laughs> and, and the reason is because when we submitted the paper saying that this pathway was rewarding, uh, it was not well accepted. It was, it, was, it was against the dogma, so it was rejected from one uh, uh, a journal to another and finally you make it into Neuron uh, for review and they ask us that instead of activating this pathway here, activating the release here in the VTA, that we should activate the, dosa, the cell bodies in the dosa rafe and I thought the whole purpose of the paper is to study a pathway, is not to study the, the global dopamine, serotonergic neuron because activation of serotonergic neuron has been done for 40 years and with confused results. So don't give up if your paper is rejected. <laughs> I told you 10 years. <laughs> so, okay. So now we wanted to know if these neurons in any way participate in the neurobiology of cocaine. Specifically, we wanted to know if they played a role in cocaine-seeking behavior. And here I'm just going to, to uh, make a parenthesis because in basic uh, science, what we, um, we use animal models that they develop the preference for cocaine and then they go into an extinction period and then we put these animals under conditions of a stress or we give them a little tiny cocaine and that the animals uh, go back to the area where it was previously associated with the intake of cocaine. So this is a model of um, the um, seeking behavior after extinction that tries to model 
uh, what is happening in humans that is a major problem in treatment and that is relapse. You know, individuals that develop drug addiction and eventually they go back to, to re uh, they relapse. Not, so the idea is to find out the uh, mechanisms that control uh, no relapse in animals because we don't refer as relapse, instead we refer as seeking behavior, drug seeking behavior. And as I said, in, in the lab we induce this seeking behavior, relapse, uh, when we put the animals under stress or when we give them tiny cocaine, that it, uh, tiny amount of cocaine. And this is called priming. That's why uh, individuals that have alcohol disorders, uh, they, when they, um, they are in, in treatment, they don't consume tiny amounts of alcohol because that can trigger the relapse. So, uh, what we decided to do, we started with the big blue tree cream ice, and as before, in the dose arafe, we injected viral vectors, and in the top of the VTA, we put a laser, and then we tested these animals for preference, for, um, in a paradigm of uh, cocaine place preference, that I think uh, it was nicely reviewed yesterday about this paradigm. So, in our lab, uh, we, this is the, the chamber that we use, and there are different characteristics in each of the, the chambers that are connected through here. And we put the animal in one of the chambers, in this case, this one. So first, we um, test the animals to habituate the animals, to, to habituate it to the apparatus, and this is test one. Then the animals are confined, each time that they are confined to this chamber, they receive an injection of cocaine, and this is our cocaine uh, condition place preference paradigm. Uh, after six uh, days of injection er, daily of cocaine, the animals are put in this area, the same area where they used to receive the cocaine, but this time they don't receive cocaine. And we run this for several days until uh, this is called extinction, and the idea here is that when we test these animals in the test tree, these animals then not going to prefer these brain areas. Because, uh, sorry, this uh, area <laughs> that was, uh, happened with my brain. No? So, so they're not going to prefer this uh, chamber anymore because they don't, uh, eventually they said, you know, if the brain actually say, you know, if I'm not receiving cocaine, what is the point to go there? However, there still is the memory hiding there in the brain of the association of this chamber with the cocaine. And this is the danger, uh, one of the dangers of drug addiction. Because, you know, in an individual, if goes to a place that is in treatment and then goes to a place where they used to receive the drug, there are cues that trigger the consumption of an individual that it goes out the, the drugs that has well, a, brain, a, a drug disorder and then if it uh, loses their job and there's some stress, then goes back and takes the, the consume, try to consume the drug. So in this case, uh, as I mentioned before, after extinction, the animal doesn't prefer the, area, the compartment in which they, it was receiving the drug, but if we give the animal, if we put the animal under stress, or we give it a tiny amount of cocaine, then the animal is going to restate. That means that the animal is going to go back to the chamber where it was associated with the receiving cocaine. So what we wanted to know, and this is something very well established, but we wanted to know if photostimulation of the pathway that I just mentioned, that I described to you, if photostimulation reinstate cocaine-seeking behavior. Because we are interested in knowing what are the pathways in the brain that participate 
in, in humans eventually in uh, relapse. So this is what I'm going to show you now. Uh, this is uh, an example. This is uh, our control animal, and this is the animal with chanerodopsin, expressing chanerodopsin in the glutamatergic neurons of the dorsal raphe with the stimulation in the VTA. And as you can see here, and it has been shown for many years, is that the animals develop preference from the compartment in which they receive cocaine. And there's no big difference uh, with the animals that have chanerodopsin. Notice that we don't have light stimulation here. This is just to show that our animals, the same animals injected with different con uh, the control and the one that had chanerodopsin, basically uh, that the expression of the chanerodopsin in our animals is not messing up the uh, normal behavior of an animal. So then uh, we do extinction. Again, the animals drop. They don't show the preference from the, air, uh, the compartment where they were receiving the drug. The same thing happened with our channel in animals. So then uh, what we did is a stimulation of, of the pathway. And here, they, this animal doesn't have channel so they don't care, they still, they don't prefer the area where they were receiving cocaine. However, these animals, the chanerodopsin animals, in the presence of the light, they restate the uh, preference from the area that previously they were receiving the drug. So for us, this was incredible because this means that a stimulation of a pathway from the dosa rafe to the VTA can be responsible of relapse, at least with cocaine and at least with animals, animal model. And, and this was unknown. Uh, it was not an indication of dosa rafe projecting to the VTA to be implicated in this uh, aspect of drug addiction. So then we thought, okay, so we know that glutamate release from the dosa in the VTA, uh, induces cocaine-seeking behavior. So what happened with serotonin? Does VTA serotonin release from the dual dosa rafe ser neurons, cocaine, induce cocaine-seeking behavior? And the answer is no. And I'm showing you the data here. Again, this is the control animals, uh, they develop the condition, uh, cocaine condition place preference, they go to extinction, and uh, then uh, in the light they don't restate, and exactly the same thing happened uh, with the animals that have chanerodopsin. I'm just going to put side by, so this means that release of serotonin from the dorsal raphe neurons does not induce reinstatement of cocaine-seeking behavior. So how this inform us about treatment? That if we manipulate the serotonin neurotransmitters in the dosa rafe, maybe they're not going to be affected in uh, treatment for relapse. But if we manipulate in some way the release of glutamate, or at least the neurotransmission of glutamate, in the VTA, they may be helpful to um, delay or avoid uh, relapse. So I'm just going to put side by side what I show you. This is the data obtained for big glut tree, tree animals, and this is the SER, just to double emphasize uh, triple emphasize that this glutamatergic release from the dorsal rafe to the VTA, rain state cocaine seeking behavior. In contrast, release of serotonin does not induce cocaine-seeking behavior. Okay, so now I've been, I've been showing you data of gain of function, as, as, as they like to call. So, but I wanted, we wanted to know if, 
inhibition of the release of glutamate in the VTA from this dose RFA is capable to block a uh, reinstatement produced by stress, that is what it happened in nature, or induced by uh, a small amount of cocaine. So for these studies, we use exactly the same paradigm that I've been telling you. We use big tree animals, but these animals were injected in the dose of with a virus that contained helorhodopsin instead of channel rhodopsin. As you know, activation of channel rhodopsin produces ex excitation of the, the neuron. In contrast, expression of halerhodopsin uh, avoids, uh, produces the inhibition of neurotransmission. So before we were activating this pathway, now we are inhibiting and see what happened. So this is, uh, the same paradigm that I described before. This is our control animals. Uh, they develop the preference uh, for the chamber where they receive cocaine. They go into extinction. And then when we put these animals in, when we give a food shock to these animals, the animals go back to the area associated with cocaine. And this is in the presence of halerodopsin. But remember, this is our control. So halerodopsin is, is not doing anything. This is just to show you the power of a stress. A stress reinstate drug-seeking behavior in the animal. Also, it was extinguished, but is reinstated once the animal is under stress. However, when we inhibit in this, in our hello animal, we inhibit the release of glutamate from in the VTA from the dose RFA, you can see that there's no reinstatement of cocaine seeking behavior. So this is amazing because this is showing that inhibition of the release of glutamate in the VTA from the dose RFA is capable to stop drug seeking behavior. Treatment of drug addiction in animals. Huh? <laughs> so then uh, what we did is uh, to put the animal in another uh, stress situation, and that is for uh, swimming. And as you can see here, the animal also reinstates cocaine-seeking behavior, uh, but is absent when we inhibit the release of glutamate in the VTA from those arafe. So, okay, so then we said, it, maybe something is going wrong with our animals. You know, we wanted to, to have um, ways to uh, control here. So then we injected the, the animals with just saline. And saline did not reinstate cocaine-seeking behavior in any of our cohorts of animals. But then we did cocaine priming. And as expected, once we gave the animal a little cocaine, the animal should reinstate cocaine-seeking behavior. So um, this, this is something that has been repeated over and over with animals. Uh, but the new twist here is that is doing in the presence of halerodopsin. And what happened is that in our hello animals, when we inhibit the release of glutamate into the VTA, we did not have the reinstatement of cocaine-seeking behavior. In my view, this is a very striking result because it indicates that uh, cocaine seeking behavior induced by two forms of stress or by priming of cocaine uh, it can be blocked. It's completely blocked. Look at this. It's completely blocked by inhibiting the release of glutamate from the dosa rafe. So this is uh, just to 
uh, what I told you before, photoinhibition of VTA glutamate release from the those that are fave glutrineurons block both stress and priming induced reinstatement of cocaine seeking behavior. Uh, just to remind you that I talk about these neurons, dual neurons, serotonergic glutamatergic from the dose RFA that produce reward. And I show you that there are these glutamatergic neurons from the dose RFA that produce reward. What I'm telling you, reminding you about this is that this is a beautiful example of two, of ne of two pathways that produce reward. However, the, these two pathways, they don't produce, they don't have the same effects of cocaine seeking behavior. So, this tells us clearly that reward by itself, it is not what uh, drives necessary drug seeking behavior. There are other components that we need to, to investigate. And again, both pathways are coming from, they have the same origin and they have the same end. So in summary, what I show you is that serotonin release from the RAFE to the VTA um, is rewarding. However, it does not reinstate cocaine-seeking behavior. In contrast, the glutamatergic release from the RAFE to the VTA uh, is also rewarding but reinstate cocaine seeking behavior. And when we inhibit this neurotransmission that results in inhibition of cocaine induced uh, seeking behavior, and also inhibits the stress induced seeking behavior. In conclusion, I show you that VTA release from glutamate from those are affect glutamate fibers plays a critical role in the restatement of cocaine-seeking behavior. And if we are ambitious, we can say that maybe it participates in a relapse to cocaine use. Uh, these are the members of, some of the members of the, the lab that participate in this project. And with that, I also want to mention uh, Becky, who gave us the big blue tree, tree animals even before she published with those animals. And again, it's a great pleasure to present this talk uh, as part of the uh, 30, um, and 30 years of uh, high productivity and growing and uh, education of the uh, Instituto de Neurobiología. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for so beautiful presentation and more for the beautiful results. I just wondering if uh, you can speculate a little bit more about your results because give us a lot of, at least for me, makes sense a lot about the new or not so new results related with psychedelics uh, in treatments of uh, problems with addiction and other uh, kinds of, of, of uh, sickness uh, related with emotional uh, memory related problems. So you are showing that serotonergic nervous system could be related with these results with uh, psychedelics treatments. Well, um, actually, yesterday after the presentation, well, thank you for the question. Yesterday after the presentation, I started thinking, are these neurons the, the ones that have the serotonin type through A receptor or these ones, or the duals? You know, so I think uh, this is, uh, in, in the round table before, I said that I have learned a lot from this symposium, and those are one of the things 
that sometimes it's not that you also learn, but it triggers something in your brain without you knowing it. Huh? And so uh, after uh, those talks and after you question, I'm now que and I would like to know, you know, if maybe this pathway that we study here, the one from the VT8, the dorsal effect to the VT8, is not the one that is involved in psychedelics. Uh, but maybe it's another pathway that we haven't known that exists. Yeah. Thanks. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for the wonderful talk. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit uh, in shock yeah. about the fact it, that, as you said... Sorry, is it on? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, so, now. Yeah. So, as you said, uh, we had from the textbook knowledge that serotonin comes from the Rafa nucleus. And you're showing here that it's not only serotonin, but glutamate. And in fact, in your slide, you show that it's mostly glutamate to this particular pathway. So my question is related to if you can expect that it's the same, more glutamate from the Rafe to the other nucleus that Rafe is, is pointing at, because we know that it goes to the prefrontal cortex, amygdala, et cetera, et cetera. Can we expect the same um, or not? Um. Actually, this is something that we are doing now. Uh, I'm glad that you are that question because I have something that I don't know, maybe your brain capture and is, okay, she's telling me that he's releasing just uh, glutamate or serotonin, but she also show us that when she used an animal that is ser, she also released glutamate. So what is something here is wrong? Uh, something in your brain click as a confusion, and let me tell you that is not the case. Because the animals I'm using are animals that can activate both types of neurons. And just because this is an institution of training and knowledge, I prepared this slide <laughs> <laughs> because I want to answer the question that you ask. We need to have a way in which we can just manipulate pure glutamatergic neurons, pure serotonergic neurons, and just the population of serotonergic glutamatergic. And the Cree, the Ser Cree, the Big Lutri Cree animal doesn't allow us to do that. So we needed to do something else. And what we did is to use a double recombinant animal in which we obtain animals that have a big, they are Big Lutri Cree and Ser Flip. And thanks in collaboration with Dicerot, uh, we obtained a, a new, newly developed uh, a viral vectors that they, they are called intronic recombinant sites enabling a, a combinatorial targeted insert. And what happened with these viral vectors is that if we inject this uh, viral vector here, the Cree flip that I, I, I didn't have the diagram, we can uh, specifically uh, manipulate the big blue tree Cree, the double neurons. If we inject another viral vector, we can manipulate just the glutamatergic neurons. And if we inject another viral vector, we can just manipulate the uh, serotonergic neurons. And the reason why I'm showing this to you is so you see that now we, now that we know that I think that most of the neurons, they release more than one neurotransmitter and how we can manipulate and interrogate the function of each of the neurotransmitters. And this is one of the tools. And we repeat the whole experiment that I showed you before and what we found is that just release of glutamate without serotonin induces cocaine-seeking behavior. And the reason also what I show you that this um, uh, new strategy is because now we can figure out where the pure glutamatergic nerves for the RAFE project throughout the entire, entire brain. And the answer is we don't know because we just produce these animals. Uh, and, but the preliminary data that we have, it means it 
it doesn't seem that uh, they, they, produce, they release more glutamate or serotonin in, other, in all the, the brain areas. And then that reminds me of my second question, which is uh, during the presentation you said that serotonin produce a, a lower uh, release of dopamine than the glutamatergic cells. Yeah, but, but actually is, uh, th this release is not just for serotonin, it's for the co-release of serotonin and glutamate. I see, I mean, the, the co-release, but in terms of that, like, what, do that, does that mean that the glutamatergic projection would basically just increase a little bit higher the firing rate of that region? So then my question is, if the relapse is not related just to the firing rate of the, bit of, of, of the, of the target uh, nucleus, not to the projection itself? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, th that's a very good question, and I th maybe I misspoke. Uh, it it Im involves the activation of dopaminergic neurons, uh, but uh, what what I wanted to say is that it's not mediated through the those are a serotonergic uh, projections, and that goes to the question that it was asked before about um, uh, psychedelics. Yeah, and so this is uh, very very interesting because. For many years, it was just the thinking that serotonergy in some way was inhibiting activation of the reward. But it's not the case. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there another question? Uh, yeah, there's one there. Thank you so much for your talk. It was a beautiful talk, Maricela. Gracias. I'm, I'm thinking if the stress hormones such as adrenaline and corticosterone interacts in a different way with glutamate and serotonin and that's why we have different uh, differences between the actions. Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. In fact, uh, there's a postdoc in the lab that is analyzing um, the different receptors in these two types, pop, uh, pop, uh, mainly in the glutamatergic neurons, because we wanted to know if they have uh, CRF receptors, for instance, or uh, we really don't know. So this is a whole new thing, you know, the conceptually, and so we have a lot of work, yeah, to yeah. do, no, Thank we don't you. know, thanks. Thank you. Maricela, thank you very Oscar much for your Pospero. talk. Um, just tell me if you think that this stimulation of these uh, um, neurons, neurons that release uh, glutamate are producing a negative reinforcement when the rats reinstate the seeking of cocaine. Is it a negative reinforcement? No. The, the ones that participate in negative reinforcement are the glutamatergic neurons in the VTA. So, yeah. but this, as you say in the last sentence, if I can read it correctly, because my eyes do not help. The one is the inhibits stress-induced seeking behavior. It inhibits. The, mm -hmm. the release of glutamate? Yeah, so if, if you stop this re release of glutamate? Ah, if you stop the release, but... The, the, it, it, you it, inhibit this uh, release? No, but my point is that uh, if you increase the release of glutamate, ah. then you reinstate the behavior, is yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. And that seems to be like a negative I, reinforcement. It's not a negative reinforcement because you are activating glutamate uh, dopaminergic neurons and there you are releasing uh, dopamine in the um, circumvent. It's, it's just a question. Okay, uh -huh. don't, take, yeah. it, don't yeah. take it in the wrong way. No, 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 no. But no. Uh, my, my question is, uh, you have shown that, as Pavel mentioned, that the glutamate increases even more the release dopamine, of dopamine yeah. and than serotonin. Yeah. but not in the case that you are presenting in the behavior. <coughs> Have you seen that in the behavior correlated with the reinstatement? The lack the of release. release of dopamine when you simulate these glutamatergic cells. 
Uh, actually, we have seen something different that is even more, I think, um, I think it's more important because uh, one, one of the things about optogenetics is that we are doing a very strong manipulation that is not physiological. Huh? So what we have done instead is to measure the activity of these glutamatergic neurons in the dosa rafe that project to the VTA and uh, monitor the activity of these uh, dorsa rafe glutamatergic neurons that project to the VTA uh, with these uh, dual recombinant animals and see that indeed when the animals go into the area where they was associated with the, the drug, there's an activation of these neurons. Well, l last question. Um, no, no, no. Continue. The projection of these uh, of these uh, axons or these cells uh, into the nucleus accumbens. No, they don't go into the nucleus accumbens. Yeah. This is BDA, right? No, this is going right. to the VTA. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah, no, my no, mistake. No, no, no. That, yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, wh what I was saying is that these neurons that project make synapses on dopamine neurons only, and they release uh, dopamine in the But we have uh, uh, been looking into that to see if these neurons directly uh, synapse on the nucleus accumbens. I think uh, it was a little confusion because I show that the VTA glutamatergic neuron, those are the ones that go to the nucleus accumbens. Uh, but I didn't talk about drug addiction on those. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Right, thank you. Thanks. Okay, we have a question on YouTube. Hi, this question was received through our live streaming in YouTube. So Isabel Mendez asks, thank you very much for your excellent presentation. I have two questions. The first one is what type of glutamate receptors would be in involved in their reinstatement cocaine seeking behavior? The second one is, do you think that in food addiction, the same neural projections could be implicated? Thank you a lot. Yeah, thanks for the questions. Uh, is an MDA receptors what we have seen? And uh, a little contribution of AMPA receptors. Uh, regarding the restatement of food, uh, um, this is a very more important question because we wanted to know if this pathway was also involved in other um, uh, seeking behaviors, and the answer is no. And this was our one of our controls. Uh, uh, we run the same type of, of studies, but instead of using uh, place preference, we use the lever pressing because it's uh, more reliable and it's easier uh, to do with food. And we didn't see that in real state uh, food seeking behavior, even in animals that they were deprived of food. Yeah. But it seems that it participated also in uh, methamphetamine. Thank you. Uh, okay, I think we finished the question. So thanks a lot, uh, Marisela, for your talk. Thank you.